Hey, what's up everybody? Too Tall Toby here, and in today's Power Move, I'm gonna show you three settings that I always encourage my students to disable before training starts. And if you stick around to the end of this video, I'm gonna show you a top secret setting found in the instant 3D mode that most SolidWorks users don't know about. So let's start out with that setting, Features Instant 3D. Features Instant 3D is a setting or a mode that I encourage my students to disable before training begins. What Instant 3D does is it lets you single click on a face and all the dimensions related to that feature will show up on screen. If you single click on one of those dimensions, you can type in a new value and when you press enter, you'll see that the geometry on screen updates immediately. Now, this is kind of cool. I actually like Instant 3D sometimes when I'm working in my professional life. Instant 3D also lets you single click on a feature and then grab the dimension grip, this point here at the end of the dimension, and drag it around on screen. And you can see that the geometry from the features updates immediately in 3D. Now I could drop this grip out here in space and end up with a random dimension like 3846, or I could drop this along the ruler and Instant 3D will actually snap to that ruler. That dimension will then leave me with a nice round value like 36. I like that. Instant 3D also lets you relocate features that are not currently constrained. So this sketch of the circle, you can see here is not constrained in X and Y. So when I single click on this feature, you can see that I can grab this grip here and I can move it in one direction or grab this grip here and move it in another direction. So Instant 3D can be pretty cool. It can be pretty useful. You can do things like grabbing a feature face and dragging that feature face to make the features taller or shorter. And this can be really useful when you're working with customers in a design review meeting you can show them their geometry updating in real time. But the reason I have my students disable Instant 3D is because Instant 3D changes the way you enter and exit sketch mode. And it's particularly the exiting of sketch mode that causes me a lot of problems when I'm teaching students. Because when you're working with Instant 3D enabled, so features Instant 3D is enabled, if you double click in the background of a sketch, you will exit sketch mode. If you double click on a line of a sketch, you will re-enter sketch mode. So a lot of times when I'm working with students, they'll go to edit this 77 dimension, but just miss it a little bit, double click, and now all of a sudden they are out of sketch mode. They say, what happened? All my dimensions disappeared and all my lines went gray. So if you've ever been working in SolidWorks and accidentally kicked yourself out of sketch mode, be sure to hit the like button on this video because now you know why that was happening. Now to enter sketch mode, if the sketch is shown out here on the screen, you can double click on the lines and enter sketch mode. If the sketch has been absorbed into a feature, like this sketch here underneath Boss Extrude 1, sketch 1, you can double click on the sketch in the tree. That takes you into sketch mode, and then when you're done working, you can double click in the background. So. As a professional, as an expert, there's times when I definitely enable Instant 3D. There's times when it's useful to be able to single click on a face and then single click on a dimension and change that dimension and have it update in real time. But most of the time I have it turned off. It just kind of becomes cumbersome with all those dimensions showing up. And another spot where it really causes me problems is when I have a scenario like this with planes, which are very close to one another. If I single click on one of those planes and then I just want to see what this dimension is, I go to grab the dimension to move it around and then I accidentally relocate the plane. I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but if it has, leave me a comment down below. Uh, that I find to be pretty annoying as well. I just wanted to move that dimension so I could see what it was and I accidentally grabbed the grip and then ended up changing the dimension. And that's because of Instant 3D being turned on. So most of the time I have it turned off, but occasionally I do turn it on. I'm not saying that it is without value. It's just something that I wanna have consistent behavior from my students and it does change the way SolidWorks works works. Now, one of the benefits of Instant 3D is that we can single click on a dimension and then immediately change the value of that dimension. And this leads us nicely into the next topic, Instant 2D. Now, Instant 2D is a sketch mode, a sketch setting. And what Instant 2D is, it gives you very similar functionality to Instant 3D. So instead of double clicking on a dimension and changing it with a modify spin box, we can single click on a dimension, type in a new value and the geometry updates immediately or we could click on this dimension extension line here and then grab the dimension grip and drag it either out in free space or we could drag it along this ruler and snap to an increment of this ruler so now we see that we've got a new mode a new setting in SolidWorks that allows us to work 
more consistently with what we're used to in instant 3D. The problem is for users like me, who have been users for a long time, I'm not used to working in instant 3D. I'm used to double clicking on my dimensions and changing them and then forcing a rebuild through. And I'm certainly used to double clicking on my dimensions in sketch mode. The biggest problem with instant 2D being on is when you click on a dimension and you press delete and then press enter, it doesn't delete the dimension. It says, please enter a number greater than or equal to negative 1 million and less than or equal to 1 million. I don't want to enter a number at all. I just want to get rid of the dimension. And what I'm used to is when I, more errors. What I'm used to is when instant 2D is not turned on, I click on a dimension. I just press delete on my keyboard and that dimension goes away. And so I'm used to double clicking on a dimension to change it and double clicking on a dimension to change it. That's what I'm used to. And that's how I want the software to work. Now, if you're a newer user, maybe you're used to the way things work in Instant 3D, and now you know how to enable Instant 2D. But for me personally, I just wanna be able to work the way it always worked. And also, I don't want to be able to accidentally change a dimension. I don't wanna be able to accidentally grab this. The reason I added a driving dimension to begin with is so that doesn't happen. Now, maybe that's just personal preference. Maybe that's just me being stubborn in my old ways, but let me know down in the comments what you think. Do you like Instant 2D or do you prefer to turn it off? Now, if you do prefer to turn it off, you might be surprised to find that icon is missing from your sketching toolbar. This can happen if you've loaded like an old registry setting, an old bunch of settings from an old build of SolidWorks. So to get those icons back, you can just right mouse button up top here, choose customize, and then go to the tab that says commands. If you go down here to sketch, you can drag and drop instant 2D and you can drag and drop shaded contours. This doesn't happen that often anymore, but just in case either of those settings is missing, that's how you can get them back. Right mouse button, customize, go here to command, and then you can drag and drop these two settings onto your toolbar. I don't need duplicates, so I'm gonna drag them off to the background, and there we go. The third and final setting that I have my students turn off is called Shaded Sketch Contours. And Shaded Sketch Contours is a tool that helps you understand when your sketch is fully enclosed. So for example, if I begin sketching here and I sketch a line that comes over and then up at an angle, another line here, and then I close this thing off, as soon as I close it off, I get this nice shaded interior. And there's some additional functionality with Shaded Sketch Contours. Like you'll see here that I can take this and I can drag it around on the screen. It kind of moves like a block. If I click inside this bound, you can see that I can immediately jump into a boss extrude right from that boundary. Kind of a weird, uh, weird preview there of that, but kind of a, a, a shortcut functionality when you're working with shaded sketch contours. And also you'll see here with shaded sketch contours, you can click in that boundary and instantly turn that into a block, kind of a nice shortcut. But the thing about shaded sketch contours that I don't really like is if you do have any kind of an external reference, then when you drag inside the boundary, you don't get that same behavior. It doesn't really move like a block. It kind of stretches unpredictably. So I don't really like that, but more significantly, when I have uh, the shaded sketch contours tool turned on, I can't crossing select to create a relationship like this perpendicular relationship. So what I mean is if I go and turn off shaded sketch contours and then take a look at this um, line here, you can see these are not perpendicular. A very common workflow that I use is a crossing select over multiple entities and then add a sketch relationship between them. And you'll see here, if I control Z to undo and turn on shaded sketch contours, I can no longer do that. I can't do that crossing select, at least not from the inside. I guess I could do it from the outside here, crossing select, but I use that workflow all the time. Like I use that very, very regularly, so much so that I found Shaded Sketch Contours to be prohibitive and that's why I turn it off. And so whenever I begin a class, I always have my students turn off these three settings. And let me know down in the comments if you like having these settings turned on, if you like having them turned off, or if this video helped you to kind of unveil some of the mystery about why you're getting certain behavior inside of SolidWorks. Now I did promise in the beginning that I'd show you one final super secret shortcut that you can only access when instant 3D is turned on. And that is when you select a face of an extrusion and you grab this grip handle here to change the height of that extrusion, if you push that down into the model, it'll actually change from a boss extrude to a cut extrude. And you can see that it even changes over here in the tree, changes from boss extrude to cut extrude. So if I click here and I grab that face and move it up, you'll see that over here in the tree, that feature name changed to boss extrude. This is the only way I know of in SolidWorks that you can change a boss extrude to a cut extrude or vice versa. 
And although this doesn't come up that much in the real world, it is kind of a cool little parlor trick and it's good to know for those one in a million scenarios where it does come up. So if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button, be sure to subscribe to the channel, leave me a comment down below, and of course, be sure to come back for some more Power Moves.